This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. Good afternoon. Calling to order the meeting of the Ad Hoc Grant Search Committee for June 30th at about 2.40 in the afternoon. We're a few minutes late. I'm calling the meeting to order, but we're going to go on hiatus for a few minutes until the other members join us. So we'll be back in about 15 minutes as soon as other people join us. Okay, this is the Ad Hoc Grant Search Committee for June 30th, back online at 2.52. And we have our three members here. Uh, Ed Gibson won't be with us today. So we have Diana, Kate, and Chris. And we'll start out with a couple of base things. Um, I think what we can do is uh, let's approve some minutes first and get those out of the way. Uh, we have a couple here from May 2nd. Uh, and May 19th, and I had passed those around. Thanks, Kate, as usual, for doing a great job on the minutes. Uh, did anybody have any comments on things? I didn't see anything in particular that was different from what we did. Um, we were trying to catch up on things, and just uh, while we have them up here, we, these, are, these are still mostly some of the things that we're still having play here, so we'll come back to that a little bit and see what we know about any of these things, but that's what's out there. So if there were no particular comments on the May 2nd ones, could I have a motion to approve the May 2nd meetings? So move. Meeting minutes. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. Perfect. Can't even talk today either. Let me try that again. Okay. So then we'll go to the 19th. Uh, let's see. Okay, and the May 19th one, uh, again, we had talked about the various webinars that were coming up or that we had already seen and just trying to have our overviews of where things are. So we still have out there, we'll, we're going to report on one of these in a minute, but um, the hazard mitigation plan, I'm thinking we should be hearing about that somewhere soon. Um, it seems like it's been forever since we put it in, um, the update of the plan there, and then um, this raise grant, I've been trying to see if I can figure out when they're going to make any announcements on that. That's that big, crazy federal one, which we don't know. Uh, and then the MVP action grant, hopefully we will be um, getting something there. That was that culvert assessment one that uh, somewhere in the next couple months, some of these will be coming to fruition. So this is just some of the things that we had been talking about here. Um, and I think there wasn't too much more than that. We knew that we had a couple things coming in the fall that we wanna see if anything is useful for that one-stop grant and the BRIC grant um, are the two big ones that we had kind of bypassed last time around. And uh, we may wanna revisit some of those again for infrastructure kinds of things. So if there's no particular questions, I'll have a motion to approve the minutes of May 19. So I'll move. Second. All right. <laughs> all right. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All right. Perfect. Okay. Well, new business. <laughs> so uh, as you two know, anyway, but just for the public who may someday watch this, God knows, um, last um, Thursday or so, uh, Ed got a notice from the governor's office saying that we were invited to a uh, an event awards ceremony in Milton, Massachusetts. And it was from Mass Trails, but it didn't say much of anything. It didn't say Southampton, you got a grant or here's how much it is or anything. It was pretty vague, but we thought, well, you know, we've applied for two. We applied for a $300,000 one. And if you remember, we did the spring version uh, at $200,000. So we figured, well, chances are it's gotta be one of those. So we decided it was worth going to Milton. And so Ed and I took off uh, whatever day that was Tuesday morning, he was going to be on vacation and he postponed his vacation for half a day. And uh, we left here about six o'clock and drove down to Milton and attended this ceremony. And lo and behold, we came back with this wonderful little piece of paper, which I don't know if I can make it a little bit bigger. Maybe I can. Uh, let's see. I can try it. I don't know. There we go. 
So the lieutenant governor was there and uh, presented us with a certificate for $300,000. So this was our fall submission. This is for the uh, Greenway Design, Engineering and Permitting. So this was just great. So there were 81 different towns that uh, had gotten grants. And I think the total amount was something like 10 or $11 million that they actually handed out. So they had a lot of money. They had uh, more money than ever because there was a family foundation called Combine, I think, Combine Family Foundation. They contributed like a million point three. <laughs> so it's like whoever they are, um, I haven't really researched them, but they added quite a bit to the pool. So anyway, they were great to do this. And so it was just a little ceremony down at a park in, in, uh, in Milton. And they didn't announce everybody's names. They just gave us our certificates as we walked in. And then we all stood around and listened to all the various governor's office people chit chat. Was there, and, uh, was there food? No, 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 not even not even no. breakfast. Yeah. We, we we had to be there at 830. <laughs> so we left here at six. I mean, it's a long ride and, you know, traffic to Boston on, you know, a work day. But we yeah. made it in time. Yeah. But no, not not even coffee, juice, nothing, water, nothing. No, no. So anyway, but uh, whatever. So we, we know we were we put in a presence from Western Mass. I, I haven't had a chance to check the um, the Mass Trails website, actually, to see what other towns from Western Mass might have gotten something. Everybody that I saw with certificates were definitely Eastern Mass, so uh, there, I'm sure there were others, but we we didn't hang around and do our politicking like maybe we should have. I don't know. Uh, we did speak to the lieutenant governor and thanked her in person, and Amanda Lewis was there, too, from the grant program that we've dealt with her, yeah, yeah. and she says, oh, yeah, I recognize your names. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm afraid you do. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't we, we didn't want to hang around too long <laughs> and have any other questions so um so anyway so that's wonderful so we've come back with that amount and so that you know kind of makes up for the frustration of actually and that i sort of buried the headline here but um you know that we had the housing choice small town capital grant that was our very 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 first grant that we applied for and got which was the hundred thousand dollars toward the acquisition of the greenway and we've known that, you know, that's been on a tight time schedule and, you know, June 30th is the deadline. And we had been trying, talking to the program people, telling them the progress with the railroad and so forth and how it's really not in our control. The railroad and mass DOT have to do all of their things together to formally abandon the railroad, agree that, you know, something is not gonna happen in the future with it, et cetera, and get it to the transportation standards board, I believe. Mm -hmm. Once they do that, it still comes back to the town and we've got another two or three things to do apparently on our end, but we're, we're stuck until they do that. So the closing that we had programmed and planned, uh, which is what we had put in this new $300,000 grant as a start time, um, has not happened. And unfortunately, we tried everything and they will not extend the grant. So Ed and I had a phone call with folks. We talked to our lawyers about trying to take the $100,000 from the grant and put it in like an escrow account in, you know, in to hold it basically so that the grant program could allow it to count as being spent mm -hmm. on their side. Um, and then, you know, we'd obviously pay it out when the railroad finished doing what they were doing and we, that would be a portion of the full bill for the railroad. But their lawyers, the grant program's lawyers didn't like that idea. Mm -hmm. um, and their argument is, well, if we give you this extension, we don't do extensions on this program, <laughs> even though it says you can have an amendment. But anyway, um, if we do an amendment and give you this extra 100,000, then that takes $100,000 away from our FY23 money. And that means somebody else isn't gonna get a grant. It's like, yeah, okay, I get the point. But you know, as much as we try to say, look, we've done everything we can do and we, it's, it's totally out of our control, but we actually got nowhere on a very frustrating phone call, in my opinion. I think it, that might have been Ed's second. I, it was my first with this group. And then after we got off that, I said, look, you know, we have to call in, call in other people. So we got Vellis's office, Kelly Pease's office, and Lindsay Sabadosa on board um, because they'd all written letters for us and said, guys, this is what's happening. Can you help? So we arranged a phone call and... Ed was on it with, um, Lindsay was there herself. And I think it was probably reps for both. Uh, Kelly might've been there, I'm not sure, but uh, John Bellis sent a, a rep uh, to the phone call. So even with them on there and Ed, same thing, grant program would not even bend. What, so- What department is it that was being- uh, Department of Housing and Community Development, DHCD. Hmm. 
So that's one, I guess, I don't know, we'll have to keep on a watch list for us in terms of, you know, if, if we ever go that way on some other kind of grant program, we just have to be careful. But I think, you know, it's, it's interesting. If you remember, that was the one that just had the funny name, right? It was housing, um, affordable housing and, and small town capital grants or something like that. So I'm, I'm thinking housing is probably, you know, 85% of what they gave awards for. So if they lose $100,000 toward a housing project, then I can see why they're, you know, why they're saying what they're doing. But at the same time, I've never met a grant program that isn't at least flexible. We would just say, give us three months, just three more months, you know, and didn't didn't work. So bottom line is we have lost the $100,000. It's, it's not coming our way. Um, so we are short $100,000 technically in terms of paying for the acquisition when that bill comes due we've got the money we've got 270 from cpc if you remember and um so what happened is kelly pease our rep uh current rep uh, put in money on the bond bill he put a request an amendment on the bond bill that's before the state house to see if they could add at the last minute literally um add a hundred thousand dollars to that bill for us and i haven't heard whether that happened whether it's been accepted voted on or anything yet so i don't know they were going to try from their point of view if they could do anything or earmark any other funds from some infrastructure fund or whatever so it's not it i mean it'll it'll all still go through it's just a matter of you know if, if we, we just have to figure out how we can <laughs> pull in this other money from some other place um so i think you know realistically from what we've heard from the railroad we're probably talking instead of now, um, July, August, September, I'm gonna say, you know, probably end October, early November would be my guess when they will actually finish closing the deal on on the railroad. It's, I don't know, certainly before the end of the year, before the end of the calendar year for sure. But I'd, I'd, I'd like to be a bit more optimistic and say, you know, first of November or something like that. So anyway, a big disappointment. I, I can't even tell you how I was feeling. And I think we all are just in terms of how frustrating that is, especially on our very first grant. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I really appreciate everything you tried to do to prevent it from happening. But I also think it's helpful in different ways that we have different town representatives advocating on our behalf and, yeah. and advocating for the rail trail. Right. Uh, it's nice to hear that Kelly Pease in his new role is also advocating on our behalf. Right. He, uh, yeah. he stopped by when we were out by the parade and, and yeah. said hi. And I told him, I'm, I'm sure we, that we'll be in touch for future <laughs> grant deal. projects. So yeah, sure. Yeah. And, you know, and honestly, I mean, Lindsay's probably been one of our biggest supporters and even though she's not technically with us anymore, I mean, she was more than willing to, you know, jump feet first in. So um, anyway, so that, you know, that was kind of bittersweet, but then now we we walk away a week later, literally with with this yeah, grant. Yeah. So, but Is it anyway, possible to talk to the railroad and tell them, you know, what happened and ask them to. Yeah, know. I I think it's a little bit, you know, it's you know they do their part, then it's over to DOT. So it's you know between the two of them, I, I think our lawyers have talked to them and said, hey, look, you know, guys, can you speed it up at all? And uh, it just. It's on its own timeline. It's, it's you mean the really town lawyers? The yeah. town lawyers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the town lawyers that are handling it for us. Yeah, right, in Boston. And so they've talked to the railroad folks. So anyway, um, long story short, sort of half half empty, half full. <laughs> but uh, I mean, to turn around and, and come up, this was a surprise. I mean, I wasn't expecting this you know, right away. I mean, I was thinking like the end of July. So I wasn't expecting it like now that this would even be announced. So that's the good and news. Yeah, how do you think it's going to affect Manhattan Meadows? I mean, can we go ahead and yeah, I'd stay. There? Yeah, no, no, I'd, I'd go ahead. We're we're not going to not get the acquisition. It's just not you know June thirtieth like we had hoped. I yeah. mean, it's going to be probably four months delayed. I'd say, but yeah, it, it's not an issue. I think where you've changed around the you know the entrance way to Manhattan Meadows, and I guess you guys sort of tying into that since it's a, a, a parallel topic, but um, I understand you had another bid opening for the work on Manhattan Meadows and it came in under the 50,000 this time? Yes, one did. One was like 83 and one yeah. was 36. I, I've yeah. never heard of the company, so yeah. um, Ed is supposed to check out their references. But okay, yeah. yeah. And I understand that the one you'd been working with didn't bother to bid at all. No, that's just, really that's strange, just, really. That is completely bizarre, yeah. but anyway. 
So at least so Manhan Meadows, I think, should be assuming this company checks out and they have their bona fides, they ought to be the ones that, you know, would be awarded the contract because if it's, you know, right. under 50, yeah. we can move forward easily. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they can actually work there on the railway. even. Yeah. OK. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be any issue. Nobody's going to be uh, personally. I don't think there's anything going to be checking on this. This is this is so far down the line. I, I can't see why anybody would have any particular issue with it and you know by the time they get down because they can't work until the fall anyway really i mean late like november ish right for the turtles i'm not so. sure it's all been so confusing and so i know stuff when they yeah. when they will start but right but i, I think soon. i think i think with the endangered species stuff i thought they couldn't get down the on the land until like you know between november and march or something so my Maybe. point is whenever they might be ready to start I'm thinking we will have this in hand by okay. then. So okay. I, I think it's all, <laughs> it's, It'll work. It, it's weird. It's kind of all up in the air, but I feel like it's all gonna coincide at the same moment, you know? <laughs> That's my my thinking on it. So uh, I wouldn't worry about it. I think, you know, keep plugging ahead with Manhattan Meadows and this will all, come to fruition here so so that's the good news anyway um <laughs> half good news <sighs> yeah so if you have the ability to share that press release on the community page or maybe post it on the town website yeah i was looking i i wanted to actually get the um the um the press release from the governor's office have you seen that i have not it's I, on the mass.gov is it okay website um yep. Yep. yes it was announced june 28th Okay, I haven't done that. If can you maybe I don't know, can you cut and paste it or anything and just send it to me or I'll yeah. I'll so can... I'll send the link to you right now. Okay, and then I'll oh yeah I'll get it posted. That would be nice. Uh, so right now the certificate is posted on Ed's door <laughs> at town hall or on Judy's door on the outside office. But we did invite just so you know we did invite Aaron, Mark, and Ellen to go with us if they could, and none of them could go with. So um, we did include them to say if they wanted to come down with us, but they were all working obviously. So. Anyway, so it was a quick trip, you know, two and a half hour drive each way for about an hour ceremony. <laughs> yeah, but okay. No breakfast. <laughs> no breakfast, but anyway, but it was, uh, you know, coming back with 300,000 bucks, I'm not going to complain. Yeah, no, you can't complain. No. <laughs> not going to complain. That covers gas money for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so that's the biggest news. Um, where else are we here? Well, let me see what else I had on my brain. So the other thing, I guess, uh, I do want to keep checking on that raise grant, this crazy million dollar one, because because that now, we had to submit it through grants.gov. And once it goes through there, you don't see it after that. It, you've got to be checking in. With the program. <laughs> yeah, you got to be checking in with the actual federal program. So I want to see if there's any dates out there in terms of when that might be announced. I haven't caught any offhand, but it's Let's see if it's in the FAQs. Yeah, maybe. And so it's under R-A-I-S-E and see if yeah. you could be looking there if you see anything. Um, and then the folks from Tie and Bond reached out. Remember, they did the draft with the draft. They did the submission of the MVP action grant for uh, the culvert study. And they reached out and said that there is another grant. Uh, let me see if I can find this here. Where is that? Um, Oh dear, uh, where to go? Asset management. Well, anyway, it's an asset management grant. Um, hold on, just a second. I thought I had it picked up on my screen here. And of course, it's weird when you try to do um, a screen share from a website. Here, this just doesn't like me again. Let me just find this. Mm. Uh, asset management plan. Okay, so this is something out of the Clean Water Trust, I believe. Uh, and so the folks, let me just share this now that I found it. If I can do that, hey, why won't it share me? Share me, share me. Here we go. Oops, can you see that at all? No, not yet. No. Okay. Sorry, I'm just copy pasting. I did find the raise grant. We'll chat about it. Okay, yeah, all right. And I don't have the right one. I'm not sharing this one again. Hang on. <laughs> Got to unshare that one so I can share something else. Okay, let's try this. <laughs> Here we go. All right. So this is, um, so the folks at Ty and Bond wrote back and said, hey, you know, there's this other grant coming up. It's called the Asset Management Planning Grant. And this is another one um, that's going to be up to $150,000 uh, or something of thereabouts, and it requires a match. I think it was a, I think it was a 40% match, both in kind and cash or something like that. 
but they basically are saying that they think it would be worthwhile to apply for this. And it's specifically, I'm just gonna highlight right here. Um, so it's gonna be for the, yeah, come on, Chris. Uh, uh. Come on. So this is more for um, existing water infrastructure that includes drinking water, wastewater and stormwater systems. So they wrote back to Randall and us and said, hey, you know, this is coming up, I believe it's due in early, early to mid August. And they seem to be willing to take this on and also develop the grant application for this one, saying that it's basically kind of an extension of what they already did for the culvert project. And it wouldn't be a, a heavy lift um, to do this. And so I forwarded this again to you, to Randall. And also I included our, our water superintendent, Tom Gaughan, on this because it seems to me like this could be useful to the water department too. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I put it in their lap saying, you know, I think we should take tie and bond up on their offer because they basically said they thought they could do it without incurring any other costs mm -hmm. because it was going to be, you know, very similar to the kind of things that they had done um, with the um, mm -hmm. culvert grant here. So this is one because it is a little bit broader than stormwater, which is kind of where, you know, Randall's bailiwick is and some of this that, you know, they basically could be involving the water commissioners. So hopefully um, I asked Randall to, to please, uh, you know, give them the go ahead that I know I thought it was a great idea if they were willing to do it, let them with their manpower uh, pull it together. So that may be one, we'll just put it on our master list of things here. And where would the match funds for that come from? Well, we, as usual, have to figure that out. Um, we'd have, there is an in-kind portion. I'm, I'm thinking it was 20% in-kind and 20% cash. So again, uh, if worse comes to worse, we go back to CPC for, you know, a 20% match or something, perhaps. Um, it's probably, it's one that you've got to put in, you know, by August, but you don't need the match right then and there. Um, you need it if you got awarded it. So we've got some time to play with that and figure out a strategy probably um, on that. But um, yeah, so that's one. So that may be one that they will tackle themselves, which I think is fine. Um, and that would be a good idea. So that would be one other one going on. So the other ones, um, I think uh, that, we want to keep an eye on uh, the couple that come to mind are the transportation related ones. I've been talking to the police chief and we've got at least two places in town up by Pomeroy Meadow between the post office and the school, uh, Parsons Way, I believe it is, and Rosalie, where residents have got a bunch of kids that, you know, run across the road to go to school. And so there's some real interest in maybe having at least a crosswalk there. Oftentimes you need to put in a flashing light. I don't know. Um, and um, so Ian is in particular interested in trying to explore that. So there's another one on somewhere on Line Street where speeding has been an issue. So trying to do some traffic calming. And so there's two or three kinds of things like that around town that are kind of, you know, on the police radar, literally. <laughs> it's, it's kind of, um, you know, a, a priority that they'd like to see us try and get some money for. So I would like us to just do some searching around. I don't know. I haven't had time really to look at the Safe Routes to Schools program, if that has anything um, particular coming up for us. I'm thinking there's a fall deadline on that one. So that may be one. And, you know, a couple of people have said, well, you know, why do you need a grant? All you've got to do is put, you know, paint on the road. And it's like, well, it's not quite that easy. Um, you need to do a traffic study, basically. And that's where we ran into problems, if you remember last time, where when we were trying to do the one way on gun road extension, we need a feasibility study and trying to get any program to fund feasibility studies and maybe traffic studies is a challenge. So we, if everybody could do a little searching and see what we come up with for anything related to traffic calming and you know crosswalks and whatever. I mean, DOTs are obvious you know, entity, but the, you know, Palmer Meadows are town road, it's not a state road. So we wouldn't necessarily, I don't think have to have any approvals from them it would be more, you know, you've got to have a traffic study to prove why this is necessary, et cetera, et cetera. So I have a, um, there is a grant program called Safe Streets and Roads for All, and it's through the U.S. Department of Education. And it's, mm -hmm. I just pulled up the website. It says fiscal year 22 notice of funding opportunity is open through September 15th. Okay. 
Uh, it says eligible activities or developer update a comprehensive safety action plan, conducts planning, design, and development activities in support of an action plan, and carry out projects and strategies identified in an action plan. Okay. For planning, safety analysis, engagement collaboration, uh, project selection, and progress and transparency method, whatever that is. Mm, okay. It says apply low cost roadway safety treatments, um, which sounds like exactly what we're trying to do. Yep. Uh, that could, that could I have a question. If you don't, if it's not state a state road, then you, then why do you? Do they have to see a feasibility study? Who sees the feasibility? I guess the grant program itself. I mean, that's what that's what Ian told me was that they well, not so much a feasibility study, but a traffic study. Traffic. On these two, the the feasibility study would be more that one way one, you know, changing yeah. that around. But yeah. the traffic study would just be to show that you know there's this volume of traffic and the speed is so much and the kids are at risk and you know just running across the road and I I'm not quite sure. Um, but who does the traffic it. study? Are there like consultants who do that? Or? Yeah, I think there are. And I'm I'm wondering. I think you know Rick who helped us out from Stantec on the cemetery sidewalk. I'm pretty sure he's retired now, but you know I don't know if he's doing any you know, freelance stuff or not. But um, sometimes some of these grant programs, like we lucked into that last time, you know, they have a consulting firm that they work with to do some of this work. So um, we might find that again, but okay. So that's the safe, safe, was it safe routes to school? Is that safe it? streets and roads for all. Safe streets and roads for all. Okay. Okay. So somewhere, uh, something tells me I have an email from somebody who said she was our liaison. Okay. I will go I will go I'll back. send you the link just as a and I could yeah. so um, sure and I'll, I'll go back and check that and maybe just reach out and see what she thinks but that's a September deadline so that's good that gives us a little bit of time um, because it strikes me and I without even knowing any more about it that if there were like two crosswalks right there on Palmer Meadow that's a project in its own right because it's on the same street right um, in my mind I don't know whether you could include other streets um, as part of that, but this one over on um, um, Line Street, you, you mentioned something in, in what you read, Kate, about uh, traffic treat, treatments or something like that. I mean, that that might be something like speed pumps or something. That would be my thought, you know? Um, it's a little tricky, I think, on Line Street because Line Street goes between East Hampton and South Hampton. So I don't know how we have to navigate that scenario, but Anyway, I think the, the Palmer and Meadow one is one that we're definitely interested in exploring and then also trying to see if there's any way to get a feasibility study toward looking at making gun road extension one way um, and see if that's even doable, possible, viable. You know, somebody would have to do the outreach to neighbors and all that stuff. And that's what a feasibility study would do as well. Um, so I think we've got two or three things right there in that bailiwick of, of traffic that I'd like us to focus on a little bit because I think they'll come up quicker than some of the infrastructure ones um, that might be coming along for building any buildings that we're talking about or whatever. Um, I just sent you like the all the information about it and I also shared perfect. it with Ian. Great, okay, we'll take a look at that. Um, do you want to just go back to the raise for one second? Yeah, please. Yeah. So it says under the bill, the department must make words by August 12th, 2022. The department will post awards to the raise grant website. Selected awardees may not be formally notified and should visit the raise grants website for <laughs> award information. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> Why did you do that while we're here? <laughs> but, oh, I thought it was going to have to be like a login, but let me see. Oh. Raise 20 awarded projects. Let's. It says raised 2021. So I don't know that they've posted no. this year. Probably, I think it's, I bet it's early. I, I'm, I was thinking like mid July. So I'm, I'm thinking it's maybe early, but that's good to know. Thank you for that information. Um, yeah. So we'll just keep an eye on that grant program and just see what's going on there. That's good. All right. So we may be... it doesn't look like it's been updated yet, but at least we know to expect it before August. All right. Well, that's good to know, too. Yeah. Perfect. On that one. So Great. All right. So those are those ones. Um, one more, just to uh, give you some other updates. So I think we talked last time about the cemetery sidewalk and some of the, the worry about that safety issue. And through Stan Tech and Rick, uh, he had reached out to um, DOT with some ideas of putting in a, um, a kind of an inside guardrail 
uh, out of a different material because even a inside guardrail is made of sharp metal. Uh, so if we were worried about kids falling off their bikes into the street, that was not really going to be a great solution. So he had come up with a couple of other ideas, even a wooden kind of um, barrier and some other ideas for them. And DOT basically just said, no, they didn't didn't really approve any of those ideas. They didn't think it was necessary. So after all that, we took a discussion at, at Select Board and basically said, no, we, we're fine. We think we've done our due diligence in terms of doing what we have to do. We were concerned about safety, that nobody's going to be willing to do anything. We can't cut down the tree. We're not going to move the sidewalk. Um, so it is what it is. And we're just going to hope that people are careful and safe. And if they've got little kids on bikes, that parents are with them. Um, but I've seen a lot of people, I mean, there isn't a day go by when I drive downtown that somebody isn't on that sidewalk. So it's, really it's, being, it's, it's being appreciated. I'm, I'm seeing bikers and walkers, you know, on it. So I think people appreciate having it there. And mm -hmm. it really is just that little jog around that tree. That's just a little worrisome, but, you know, I think, you know, hopefully people will use their common sense and not, it's not like it's a raceway, you know, so it's just a matter of doing that so we're not going to do any more on it the grant is finished as far as they're concerned and um so we're that one's closed really so um, i have just a minor point about that mm -hmm. uh, i rode my bike there today and i Did know you? no grass has grown along the side <laughs> lots of weeds a few you've, you've seen those pretty yellow flowers right yeah I have well, no <laughs> idea no we it's not the point that it looks bad it's more that some of the yeah. soil is kind of washing onto the sidewalk so yeah yeah, no, we, we've got to have them come back again and took, take a look at that seating because I don't even know. We were kind of kidding about it the other day. It's like, what did they even put down there? Because that looks like yellow mustard or something. And it's like, it was all this wonderful yellow, you know, line of flowers along the fence. And then they went ahead and mowed it. And I thought it looked great. Now that's all grown back again to flowers. So, yeah, yeah I don't, I don't think they did a great job a seating there. Yeah, there's a lot of bare dirt, but yeah. Who, who but, planted the seeds? Well, I think it must have been um, who had our contract on that. Uh, Gilleher, I believe. Oh, huh. So I think we may have to have a chat with Ryan. I know Ed has been out there and looked at it at one point, like a couple of weeks ago. So he may want to, uh, he's on vacation this week, but I'll have him uh, take another look maybe with Randall and see what they think about it. But um, I think it could stand another overseeding at some point, maybe in the fall when it's going to yeah. take better. You know, it's, yeah, it's so hot now that it may not take anyway. So if it was, you know, in the in the fall with some, you know, well, okay, different I'm, weather. And I'm not the only one who noticed. No, no, it's, it's kind of a strange, uh, strange yeah. planting. I'm not sure exactly what it is. And then the last one, just to give you an update, and I'll give you only a little bit that I know because I only attended a part of the meeting, but there was finally, after we did this on-call RFQ, you know, we're up against the deadline with our famous park program and the splash pad walking path, right? So the design work was to be done like um, by today, um, and it's not. Um, so I can say probably that Melissa and the grant program are not thrilled with us, but they aren't shooting us in the foot yet. Um, and through the on-call uh, engineering um, RFQ that we put out, there were two out of the six firms that seemed to have um, both uh, sort of the splash pad parks and recreation kind of focus. And those were Berkshire Design, I believe it is Berkshire, yeah, Berkshire Design out of Northampton and uh, GZA out of um, West Springfield. So GZA is like geotechnical something or other. Um, and in terms of who could start first, uh, we actually ended up with GZA. So they sent an engineer over, a woman named Anya Duffy came over to Conant Park. Uh, the, let's see, when was this? Um, end of last week, uh, I believe it was. Uh, and yeah, anyway, met with um, Mark Reed, head of the Park Commission, uh, Tom Gaughan, water super, Randall, Ree, uh, Randall Kemp, uh, highway super, Ed Gibson was there, Paula Mack from Park Commission, and I came too. And so we all sat around. I got there about five minutes late, and they were already halfway down their uh, discussion point. But just to say, I think we have a great company to work with. I was extremely impressed by this woman engineer. Um, thinking outside the box, very creative, um, definitely a, you know, probably a smaller project than what she's used to doing, but she's got 
uh, the skills and the know-how and just came up with some great ideas. So what we're talking about now, and she's gonna put it in writing, so don't we don't need to go into great detail because I don't have all the technical details, but it's not dead in the water, literally. I'm making all these terrible puns today, sorry. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be, from her point of view, it could be more of a misting yes. deck where we're not having to do anything extraneous with lots of extra water but it can tie right into the existing water pipe that goes to the park. And it's somehow it lets off a misting through these tube structures that are put out. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're not wasting water. We don't have to worry so much about, you know, storm water drainage. And anyway, long story short, even the guys seemed quite impressed. So Great. I think we have some possibilities there. Um, so she's going to come back with a few ideas in terms of spacing. And the more we talked about it, um, she was inclined to put it very close to that playscape mm -hmm. um, between the playscape and the pickle, the new pickleball court, but closer to the playscape because she saw the idea of trying to incorporate a little bit of the playscape with the with the water or the misting pad or whatever we're going to call it. It'll, God knows what its name is really going to be, but something like that um, to make it kind of, you know, look like it belonged together, um, make it kind of fit into nature, you know, not make it look alien, but, you know, maybe some boulders and some, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, yeah. I bet you all of those pickleball players would love to have a misting station. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, especially after they, we all had this tournament on the last weekend when it was 90 <laughs> degrees out, died. But anyway, so um, anyway, she just had some great ideas. And then you know, talking about, you know, even farther down. So between the, and these were just ideas. So nothing, nothing proposed, but, you know, just from the slope and, and just from the playscape down to that area where the parking lot connects there, there's a kind of a dip in the grass there. And she's like, well, you know, you might want to do something like maybe even a rain garden. It's like, oh, <laughs> well, what a novel idea. So, you know, planting particular plants that would, you know, help with drainage and, she just had some great ideas and she wanted to walk the path. So we walked out uh, to, um, to the highway and uh, it was fine until we got to the highway and said, and so where do we go from here? <laughs> it's like, hmm, nowhere. <laughs> so uh, we said, well, people have to, there's, you know, connects right up above the, by the old library and then a little bit down across from Clark Chapman, but there's a couple hundred feet two to 300 feet probably on each side of that pathway going out where there's no sidewalk whatsoever. And she said, well, you know, I, I think you've got to think about putting in a crosswalk here to go over to the other crosswalk that exists. Uh, and so that would definitely be a state highway one, but she was pretty, pretty sure that we would need to think about having a, a separate crosswalk there just for safety reasons um, to be able to enter and get in to that part of the, 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 uh, the walkway so anyway she had some some great ideas uh, and she's talking about sort of meandering not making a straight line along the tree line but kind of meandering it a little bit actually making it hug the the tennis courts uh and making it you know there and then you know meandering a little bit so she you know she just has a great vision uh, i was very impressed so she's going to put some stuff on paper hopefully in the next week and get back to us and see what that sounds like so hopefully the parks commission We'll soon have some ideas that they can toss around at their parks meeting, but um, we wanted to at least get the idea of water out there and see, you know, is this even doable? If not, you know, we were going to end up probably having to go to Melissa saying, look, the water, you know, the splash pad idea may just die on the vine and, and we'll just focus on the path. But it looks like there is something to be done. Um, she seemed pretty comfortable with doing something. So we'll see what it comes out. It may not be our original vision, but I think it could serve the same purpose and maybe mollify a few people who are so worried about their water bills and their whatever, the chatter on social media, which I'm ignoring. But, um, you know, if, if we didn't have to worry so much about drainage and right. you know, heavy, heavy uses of water, I mean, I think that's a win-win um, and there's no tank underneath or, you know, anything like that. So, um, it, anyway, the, the preliminary discussion was extremely useful. So I think we found a good, good company and a good engineer uh, to help us out. So, and the best part is she has also got experience in master planning for parks. Yes. So if, yeah. if, if, yeah. The parks, if the parks folks decide they want to do a master plan, I think she could do it very easily for them. 
So and this is Anya Duffy. You said her name was right. A N J A actually. Oh, okay. Um, but it's Did pronounced Anya. How you said she she was found or who found her? She's, she's well, one of the, we put out this on call engineering uh, RFQ. Oh, okay. uh, just, you know, for various services we might need in town. And these are all design. They're not construction. They're all focused on design kinds of work. Yeah. Uh, and it was a, a you know a dozen or so categories. And we had six companies apply. Many of them are more. Uh, water related, you know, wastewater related or other engineering, you know, bigger, you know, bridge and mm -hmm. other kinds of engineering. But these two companies out of the six um, basically had worked with parks and recreation. And so we have essentially signed a contract with all six of them to just be on call, which means we've just cut out one entire step in procurement mm -hmm. yeah. so that um, when there's a project that comes along, we know that this is our go-to for X. And so by having two companies that have got parks and rec experience, if one's not available because, you know, all their team is full and busy, then we've got a second group to go to. Um, so they then tell us who their, who their landscape engineer is in this case or whatever. And so it's the firm that provides her. Uh, so the firm that we've chosen. So it really does eliminate our procurement. So there, you know, this could work for trail design, Diana, I think too. Um, so, I mean, you know, so anything that's horizontal, it will work for anything uh, vertical, like construction up and down. That's not what this on call did. It's just getting anything that goes from left to right <laughs> or along the ground or something. A lot <laughs> so, of yeah. things do both, don't they? <laughs> well, they do, but this is this is only the the uh, the way the state procurement rules are. This is the only okay. one that uh, deals with what they call uh, horizontal uh, construction yeah. or something. I don't know how they call it, but anyway. So anyway, so yeah. So she. Well, this she, is uh, kind of like a, an aside. Why did we get a new sign for Conant Park? You know that? Oh, those have been in place forever. I mean, that, that came out of CPC money over two years ago. Oh. And they've just gotten the signs done. I mean, Dan LaValle was instrumental in getting them done. I think they designed them at, through the Parks Commission. But Dan was the one that went up to someplace in the Berkshires and got them done and okay. collected them and so forth. So uh, the Brief Field finally has its permanent sign. Conan Park has its sign. And there's a third one for the Angel Park up on Helen Drive as well. Okay. but they, i think they look great yeah, yeah um, nice. yep so and i think they're actually when i was talking to mark reed the other day they're talking about maybe another sign like another conant park sign but on the library side but with that one maybe saying you know pavilion you know with like an arrow or something you know pavilion tennis court mm -hmm. pickleball court because nobody knows you go down there you have no idea that there's a park behind there right so um they're, they're talking in sort of retrospect about, oh, I think we need another sign that really kind of points out the features. I mean, when you go by Conant Park on Route 10, you can see all the kids playing ball, but you don't know the other features of the park uh, from the other side of it on East Street. So anyway, but yeah, those got put in. They've been stored, I think, all winter <laughs> and they finally got put in, yeah. but they, they look great, I think. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so other than that, so I think that's, that's all good news. So we're, we're making a little bit of headway. I think we, we haven't lost that one. That one's a tricky one, but it requires some careful management and navigation. But the good thing is too, uh, just as a PS, this Anya has worked with Melissa. That's Melissa awesome. knows, she knows her work. Um, so that's a good thing. Um, Anya has worked on another project. I believe it was in Springfield, another park and recreation project, much bigger one that had been funded with park money park grant money so it just seems like you know the perfect fit and if we can have any kind of you know breathing room and a little bit of you know um what forgiveness if you will for being late um on things i'm hoping that maybe because melissa is aware of this company's work uh, that will get us a couple of points down the line to you know not be so worried about making a certain deadline, but we got to, you know, get something done and into Melissa. So she's knowing that we have something because she has to sign off ultimately on what we're trying to do. But um, we're, we're working as fast as we can with this engineer to see that that can happen. So all you good know, now that you're talking about all these wonderful things, they changed the definition of small town in the rural and small town development fund grant program. <laughs> No. <laughs> um, from, they changed it from six to 7,000 people. Uh. So I know that we previously like, oh crap, we're at 6,200 people. <laughs> we can't apply for that. But um, I was just thinking about playground equipment or, you know, not for this, but yeah. um, it might 
be worth, it said, uh, we have a time. It says fiscal 23 grants are expected to be awarded. Oh, no, that's June 2024. I wonder when this grant program opens. It's part of One Stop. They moved it into mm. One Stop. It'll, it'll be in the fall then, in the fall. Yeah, later on. So probably October, November, maybe, I'm thinking. Something so like that's that. Good. That's good. That's good news mm -hmm. because we weren't eligible for that program the last mm -hmm. round. Yeah. So it's it's gone from seven down to six, you said, or going up? No, it went up from six to seven. Mm, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, because we're technically 6,200 or something. So, okay. Yeah, last good. time we were like, I think it would have gone by the 2010 census and not the 2020 census. Correct. I don't think, yeah. we, I don't think we realized that until after the... Um, the yeah. grant round had closed, but maybe we'd be able to apply for this round. Right, I think so too. Yeah, so good. So that's kind of kind of the deal. So we're you know had one setback, but I think we're you know we're making progress. I mean, I'm feeling a little bit better than I was a week ago, frankly. I, bet. I was like, I was like, why are we even doing this? You know, but I think I think you know I've talked myself out of that now. So those are the ones that are kind of playing around. And I think we just have to keep our eyes open. Like you mentioned, playground equipment. I know oftentimes Parks likes to go to CPA and ask for the money. Fine if they want to do that, but there may be grant money out there too, so that we don't have to use all the CPA money that might be available for other things, you know? So That's I think it's not this a- whole, This whole thing started that way. Yeah. Kate so and I went to their meeting and said, hey, did you know you could apply for a grant? Yeah instead of the cpc so. right and i think that's that's been their you know their reluctance about doing that but i think you know there's nothing wrong with going for the grant money that's out there and then saving you know some of our own money for other things or using it as a match or whatever we have to do you know so i think the more we can you know if something comes across your radar as possible grants we just gotta gotta build back up our um the the um the spreadsheet again i've got to update it with these last couple of grant news informations in terms of our statuses on those things but we'll really have to dig into that and see what's coming ahead more for the fall i think we don't have too much now but i think the traffic ones maybe for september then we do have to keep an eye on so that would be great yeah you know if i can get a chance um i i can try to spend a little bit of time updating that spreadsheet i feel like it's been kind mm -hmm. of on yeah. the back burner yeah well, let me, yeah, and we can, I'll, I'll dig it out too, because I probably added a couple things since you've seen it, and it's, I, I got tired of Google Drive, so I probably have it in my regular file folder, so if I have an updated one, I'll send it around to you, Kate, to look at. And you can yeah, if you want to just, because I don't want to update a separate document, sure, so if you want to yeah. share it, and then we'll, we'll okay. get at least an updated version on, on to Google, and then yeah, if you want to take it down, that's fine. That'd be a good idea, yeah, absolutely, so. Great. So that's kind of all I have. I don't think I had anything else to share. That's kind of the news of the day and just wanted to at least get that much out there. Um, oh, one other question. So did they um, did they announce the award for both grant rounds for Mass Trails? No, just the, just the one. So there's a chance. Okay. So keep your fingers crossed. There's a chance on the $200 <laughs> one too, the 200,000 one. Yeah, though they only announced this one. They didn't announce the spring one yet, but it can't be far behind. I mean, I, I would certainly think by the end of July, we would hear on that one, honestly. I mean, I, you know, because they made such a big deal about having a spring round, which was so unusual. So, and, uh, I mean, that's really, it's almost great that they didn't announce it. So now we have something to look forward to. <laughs> good point. Yes. I, I like that optimism. That's good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's true. That's out there. So between that and the raise, I mean, heaven forbid, but I mean, you know, yeah, that's what we got in play with Mass Trails. So um, I think we'll we'll be having something out of this. And then one of the folks that I'll, I'll send it around, I just got an email from the guy. Uh, we did do one connection in, in Milton the other day from the folks that are on the Greenway in the town of Bolton. And they are trying to do something with an equestrian path a little bit too. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, well, as a matter of fact, so are we. I mean, not not the entire thing, but we, we cross a horse farm and... Um, with our trail and you know we were talking about at some places having a parallel equestrian path anyway they've come up with some wonderful um road material path material uh and so they've sent me the the link to the company and the whole spiel and they're telling us that we can you know keep on in communication and share notes with them as to what they're doing so i haven't really looked at their website yet but anyway i was going to forward that around to all of us and then to the greenway folks too uh, I think that would be so neat. Maybe yeah. make him not hate the idea of a 
bike path so much. Yeah. So we're, I mean, that was in, in the earlier, you know, possible design. Was it mm -hmm. at least in certain sections right around there having, having a separate place for the horses, which would be great. But Bolton's actually, you know, doing that too. So my ears perked up when I heard that one and said, hmm, let's share some information here. So I think, you know, the more we can make a few connections and stay in touch with people and see what they've run into and what they've been using, I think that'll be great too. But uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll get some of that information out and, you know, we're, we're far away from <laughs> choosing road surfaces, but uh, we're, we're not quite that far along, but nonetheless, uh, it's good to have in our resource kit of what we might look at in the future. So Sounds good. Well, I don't think I have anything else that comes to my brain at the moment here. Could we set another meeting? I don't know what everybody's schedules are for July and the summer. Are you all in and out? And is there anything that we have to try to tidy up through uh, through the summer? Not so much that I'm thinking about. I, I do think the only thing would be really if there's something along with some of these traffic ones, you know, but again, if that's September from what you said, because the, the only one I've seen like this asset management one, if Ty and Bond and, and Randall and Tom want to try and tackle that one, that's an August deadline, but that's really not something that we're going to have much to, you know, have to do with, I mean, personally. So it's, that would be an earlier deadline, but I think if the September deadline is for the traffic ones, that would be where we'd end. So, I mean, I think we could certainly go easily three weeks if not you know toward the end of july or whatever for for i will be gone the last week of july okay well will i okay yeah. well that takes care of that <laughs> we won't do it that week so <laughs> we either we could week. do the week of um july 18th to 22nd or the first week of august let's let's do the first week of august and unless we hear of anything that's coming crashing down that we don't know about uh, right now um I will do some really August double check. I have jury duty. That's a <laughs> super I fun. Know. You think that's funny, huh? <laughs> what time is jury duty? <laughs> well, it's at 8 a.m. in Belchertown. So oh, yeah. It really sucks. <laughs> you can do Wednesday, August 3rd. August 3rd is good. All right. Let's do Wednesday, August 3rd. Is 2.30 okay? Works yep. for me. All right, we'll do that then. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, you just have to go in, Diane, and just tell him you think it's guilty. You know, he's guilty, whatever he did. No, I'll, just, I'll tell him I'm crazy. I can't possibly be <laughs> no, tell, tell him you have another government meeting, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no, that's fine. Yeah, I haven't heard about jury duty in a long time. That, uh, that must be coming around again. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So... Sounds good. All right. Well, August 3rd it is at around 2.30 and I will set up the meeting and we'll just keep our eyes out. And I'll just, you know, I'll just email you guys with some updates if I hear of anything. And especially if we hear of anything about the grants, we'll let you all know for sure. But um, and we'll look for something on school, safe routes. To yeah, if you can, you know, we'll take a look at that one program, Safe Routes for All or whatever, and see mm -hmm. what it looks like. If it sounds like anything I was mentioning, if that would make sense to apply, oh. then we I'll forward that to you, Diana, too. Just okay. yeah. I sent yeah. it to Chris and to, yes, I'll do yeah. it. And then I think um, Ian is on vacation next week, so he won't take a look at it right now. But I, I have talked to him about it. He's very interested and is still trying to do something. So between traffic studies and or the feasibility study on gun road extension, uh, if anything will cover those kinds of tasks. I mean, I don't know how they expect you to do a project if you haven't really done the feasibility study, like on a major project like that. So we shall see. But if we can get those things out of the way, then there's probably other, you know, construction type monies available elsewhere, you know, but at least to get the study part out of the way would be a big help, I think. And I think somewhere I have a traffic study that might have been done on Route 10 at one point in time. So I'm, if I find it, I'll send it around just so you see what a traffic study normally would give us. And I think that's it's different because it's Route 10. So that was a state highway. But I don't know if we'd have to have anything that, you know, that, um, lengthy uh for palmer meadow for example but i ian seemed to think we would have to do a traffic study so we'll take his word for it given his experience with him so good well if there's nothing else i think i'll take a motion to adjourn i'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting okay. Second. all right and i think we can take a vote all those in favor Aye. Aye. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Well, let's call ourselves adjourned at 345. So thank, thank you. Thank thanks you. for thanks for getting together. Sorry, we had a little confusion on logistics here. It's but my fault. I should have no. just came late. <laughs> I 
well, I, I had my own issues here too. So oh, it all worked. I'm glad we all got together. So thanks and have a great, you know, couple, two, three weeks if I don't run into you somewhere along the way and uh, enjoy the summer. All right. We'll see you soon. All Thank right. you. Take care. Bye. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.